AI loves to act confident, but the moment you ask a real question, it usually crumbles. Now there's a new system called Elysia that does things differently. It shows you the exact steps behind its answers, adapts how it displays your data with tables, product cards or charts, and even learns from your feedback so it gets better every time you use it. And here's the cool part. It's free, open source, and you can run it yourself today. So let's talk about Elysia. This is a brand new open source Python framework that's trying to completely rethink how agentic RAG systems work. If you've ever tried building one of these systems yourself, you know the pain already. You load up your documents, hook it up to some LLM, cross your fingers and hope the answers you get aren't hallucinated nonsense. Nine times out of 10, the response is either irrelevant, barely connected to your query, or way too vague to be useful. That's the core issue with traditional RAG. They're basically blind. They just grab vector embeddings, run a similarity search, and hope for the best. The team at Weavy8, who you probably already know for their vector database work, decided to take this whole problem head on. They built Elysia, an agentic RAG system that's not just a wrapper on top of a language model, but actually a framework that guides AI through structured decision trees, smarter data handling, and transparent reasoning. And it's all open source, built in Python. The only catch, you need Python 3.12. So what makes Alicia different? Well, they've built it around three big pillars. The first one is the decision tree architecture. Instead of dumping 100 tools on an LLM and telling it go nuts, Alicia organizes them into a structured web of nodes. Think of it like a flow of possible decisions where each step has context of what's already happened and what's coming next. Every node has a defined action, and the agent actually evaluates its environment before making a move. It keeps track of past actions, future options, and the current state to figure out the best tool to pick. The transparency here is standard stuff. The decision tree shows each step it takes, what it tried, and where it hit a wall. If you ask for car prices, but your data only has makeup products, it just flags it as impossible and moves on instead of wasting time. When a search pulls back junk results, it'll adjust the terms or loosen the filters to get something better. And if there's an error, like a broken query or a connection issue, it catches that and stops after a few tries so it doesn't spin in circles. The second pillar is dynamic data display. Instead of dumping everything out as flat paragraphs of text, Alicia analyzes your data set and decides how to present the information in a way that actually makes sense. If you're working with e-commerce products, it'll show product cards. If you're digging through GitHub issues, you'll get a proper ticket layout. If it's spreadsheets, you get clean tables. Right now, there are seven main formats, generic display, tables, product cards, tickets, conversation logs, documents, and charts. The system automatically examines fields, data ranges, and relationships in your data set, then maps them to the right display type. And you can override the defaults if you need to. They're even planning future extensions like hotel booking displays or Slack thread displays that let you interact with the data directly, not just read it. So there it is. Some will become millionaires because of AI, some will stay exactly where they are, and some will unfortunately lose their jobs. Which one will you be? Faceless Empire gives you the exact method that's generated over $500,000 for us over the last 12 months. But only 200 people will get a chance to get our system when I reveal everything in a few days. Don't be the person who had the chance to seize this AI opportunity and didn't take it. Sign up for free priority access now. The link's below, but not for long. The third pillar is what they call data expertise. Before Elisa even attempts a search, it takes time to understand your data environment. It doesn't just run a blind vector search. It samples your collections, creates summaries, generates metadata, and maps out relationships. That means when you fire off a query, it's not scrambling around in the dark. It already has a sense of what's in there and how to approach it. Naive RAG systems like Weaviate's old Verba struggled with repeated data, overlapping types, or ambiguous queries. Elysia fixes that by building awareness of your data structure up front. Now that's the core framework, but the team has also packed in a bunch of other features that make the whole thing feel like more than just another RAG implementation. Let's start with feedback. Most systems, if you hit thumbs up or thumbs down, they might tweak something in the background, but you don't really see the benefit. Elysia does this smarter. 
Each user has their own feedback data set stored right in their WeV8 instance. If you've rated certain responses positively in the past, Elysia pulls those examples as few shot demonstrations for similar queries. That means even small, cheaper models can perform better over time because they're anchored to examples that you already liked. And importantly, your feedback doesn't leak into anyone else's experience. So personalization happens at the individual level without cross pollution. Then there's document chunking. Anyone who's worked with RAG knows that pre-chunking all your documents is a nightmare. You burn storage space and end up splitting content in ways that don't make sense. Elysia flips this around with chunk on demand. First, it searches at the document level. If a document looks relevant but is too long, then and only then does it break it down into chunks. Those chunks get stored in a parallel quantized collection linked back to the original document. That way, future queries can reuse them. It's more efficient, storage friendly, and honestly, just smarter. And they're even looking at flexible chunking strategies in future versions. Code might be chunked by functions, pros by semantic blocks, things like that. Alicia also routes different tasks to different models. If you're asking a simple question, there's no need to spin up GPT-4 or Gemini. A lightweight model can handle it, but when the job requires deep reasoning or complex tool usage, Alicia can escalate it to a bigger model. Right now, they've been defaulting to Gemini because of the large context window and strong performance, but the whole setup is flexible. You can plug in OpenAI, Cohere, Anthropic, local models, whatever fits your cost and latency requirements. The recommended path is Open Router for easy multi-model access, but you can configure all of this in the settings. Now let's step back and look at the architecture because this is where it gets pretty interesting. Alicia is built as a modern web app. You've got a full featured front end served as static HTML via fast API, so you don't even need to spin up a separate node server. It's all one Python package, pip installable. Behind that, the back end handles both the API and the app logic the LLM interaction layer is DSPY, which they chose for its flexibility and support for things like prompt optimization and few shot learning. The retrieval layer is WeV8, of course, since that's WeV8's bread and butter. You get vector search, keyword and hybrid queries, aggregations, named vectors, and native cross references. That's what powers features like chunk on demand and conversation history storage. The core logic though, that's written in pure Python, and the devs even described it as blood, sweat, and tears custom logic. They wanted maximum control and transparency, so while the package pulls in dependencies from DSPI and others, the heart of it is lean, hand-written Python. Let's talk setup, because the barrier to entry here is surprisingly low. To get going, you basically just run pip install Alicia, AI and then Alicia start that spins up both the front and the back end. From there, you head into the settings tab, drop in your WeV8 cluster details and API keys, pick your model provider and you're live. You can even create multiple configs if you want to swap between clusters or providers on the fly. And if you're not ready to commit, there's a free 14 day sandbox on WeV8 cloud you can spin up. If you want to skip the web app and work purely in code, you can just import it directly in Python. Define your own tools with decorators, build a tree, and query it. The documentation walks you through things like connecting to WeV8, setting up environments, defining schemas, and importing data. They even give you a sample import script with LLM to-do tags that guide you through plugging in your data source, schema, and embedding model. It's basically plug and play for anyone who knows their way around Python. There are also some fun extras. You can customize a little blob avatar inside the UI that persists across sessions. In the future, they plan to expand this into full theming and branding support so companies could reskin Alicia as their own internal tool. The UI also has a built-in data explorer that groups unique values, shows min and max ranges, and lets you drill down into objects for detailed inspection. And because it's all real time, you can watch the decision tree being built as you interact with your data. So yeah, Alicia is still in beta, but it's already looking like one of the most thought through frameworks out there for anyone who's serious about building agentic systems on top of their data. It's simple to start, but under the hood, there's a lot of depth for customization. And honestly, the mix of decision trees, adaptive displays, and feedback driven personalization is something we really haven't seen pulled together in an open source package before. 
And if you wanna test it yourself, there's a demo instance online and the GitHub repo is live with the code. All right, that's Elysia. Let me know what you think. Do you see this becoming the next standard for how we work with data or is it just another interesting framework that might fade away? Drop a comment, hit subscribe if you want more breakdowns like this and thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.